Splash dams were built to back up water on smaller streams. And with the spring thaw, the dramatic river drive began. Sluice gates were opened to flood the stream beds and thousands of pulpwood logs started the long trip downstream. Log drivers worked 15 hour days to get the logs moving and to keep them on their way. 12 foot pike poles of black spruce or ash with screw tips were used to pull and prod the bulky logs. Sometimes dynamite charges were placed under key logs to break up snags and jams. Splash dams could be refilled and opened several times during the spring driving season to flush the accumulated logs downstream. Much advance work had been done on the stream beds to facilitate the drive. Obstructing boulders had been blasted, snags removed, and low banks blocked off. In spite of this effort, waters often spilled over and flooded adjacent farmlands. Suits resulting from this type of damage contributed to the eventual demise of the colorful river drive. Generally, logging was done along several tributaries of a larger stream, and the floating logs converged to form a massive flow. Sometimes, logs ran into a lake, as shown here, before continuing downriver. Strings of long logs, called booms, were stretched across inlets to collect the floating logs. Pulled tight around pockets of pulpwood, the booms were then towed by tugboat across the lake. This lake had been backed up by a dam, and the logs are stored here for controlled release. These men are guiding the logs through a sluiceway leading downstream. Here, the drivers take to boats to keep the logs moving. The flat bottom bateaus required skillful coordination by the oarsmen to retain control in swift waters. Lines are fastened to the boats to hold them in place in the rapids while the drivers do their work. The distance logs might travel to reach a mill varied, but in the northeast, drives of 75 to 100 miles were common. 